Hi, I'm Paige Dears. I'm here at the ULI conference, bringing you the insights right here from the ground floor. And I am with Peter Rumler. Peter, you just ULI in, just introduced a new report. What's next for the economy, and how does the industry really think about urban planning and space design? What are some of the major takeaways from this report, Peter? Well, it, it it is designed to be something that looks beyond the year. We tend to look at things in terms of the next business year, and this is this is really a twenty year look at the big movers that are going to change the way we we react to our environment. So things like infrastructure and the huge demographic changes, the growth of the Gen Y and the aging of the baby boomers and baby boomers not retiring, those have fantastic impacts on on, on office space, on where people live, um, things like climate change and whether people will, will really pay for what it's going to take in order to do that. Those are those are big movers and this study talks about all those. So let's talk about the big movers. Some of that is Generation Y and when you talk about where they want to live, it might be downtown. So how is development versus downtown and the summer really changing? Well, what we're finding is that is that urban areas, we are becoming an urban world. I saw a statistic this week, which I assume is true, that there are a million people moving into cities around the world every five days. Hmm. That is a staggering number. And, 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 and we're not, cities aren't ready to accommodate that. They don't, they don't have the infrastructure, they don't have the, they don't have the housing stock, they don't have the supporting retail. So the impact of that is going to be dramatic. That's one cohort, which is the people who will urbanize. What the other thing that's happening is that we're redefining the definition of a suburb. As, as transportation becomes a problem, as we can't afford the infrastructure, and that, that suburb that used to be a half an hour away is now 45 minutes away. What we're finding is that people are opting closer. And so you're getting an enormous, worldwide, we think you're going to see an enormous amount of rehabbing and rebuilding and densification of what I would call the close-in suburbs. And those are both dynamics that are happening as we speak. Hmm. Another dynamic we're having, or we're hearing about, at least here at the conference, Peter, was the fact that energy and sustainability is on people's agenda. But there are only a couple cities really stepping up and saying, I want to mandate this. So if you do not have an interest from in the private sector in really carrying those solutions forward, what's next for energy? Well, I think one of the one of the lessons that any home builder will tell you is that everybody wants to have a weeds uh, house. They want to they want it to be energy conscious. They want it to be inexpensive, but they won't pay for it. They want it, but they won't pay for it. People will not pay for it. Yet. So, so the only way it's happening is governmentally. Ironically, this is one. I'm a free market guy, but this is one place where where. Intelligent legislation really is the only way it's going to, it's going to happen. And one of the panelists talked about the cities that really have made the tough call to insist on, on certain standards. That's the only place it's happening. Okay, well, we'll look at some of these uh, reports in more detail. You can find this report on ULI's website called What's Next in the New Real Estate Economy. Thanks for joining us, Peter. Thank you.